Hello, my name is Daisy Silcock. I'm one of the lead tutors at Project Skills Solutions. I'm going to be talking to you today about the National General Certificate Week 1 section of the course and the process of assessment known as the OBE, the Open Book Examination. The National General Certificate course has a fantastic internationally renowned reputation as being an excellent course for those who want to learn more about safety or who are starting in safety uh, from the very beginning. So this is kind of based for anybody who's got experience or is new to this um, profession. I personally love the NEBOT General Certificate course. It really launched my career and it's a course that I love to teach as well. So you never know, you might find me as your tutor. Now, whether the course is going to be delivered virtually or in the classroom, the format is going to be exactly the same. So I'm going to be talking you through a little bit to do with the format of delivery for the first week, as well as looking at the open book examination, which is the assessment for the first week. Now, all details, of course, date, the start times, and also uh, assessment dates will be provided by the admin support team at Project Skill Solutions. If you're not sure, get in touch with them. So I would imagine at this stage, you are ready to start your course. Now, the purpose of these videos is to ensure that you are starting our sort of best foot forward and know exactly what to expect from the upcoming uh, section of courses. So there is a, another video that goes alongside this, which will talk you through the format of week one, but I'll just touch upon a couple of bits and pieces. So your textbook that you've been given or will be sent to you is split into various different elements. And NG1, that's week one, will cover elements one to four. And it's those four elements that will be covered by the assessment in the open book examination. Elements one to four cover why we should manage workplace health and safety, how health and safety management systems work, what they look like, managing risk, and monitoring and measuring of our health and safety performance. The open book examination is one which is completed online. So if you're a classroom-based course, for example, you would need to find out the date and time for your open book examination and decide where you're going to be when you want to complete this um, assessment. Um, it's going to be, you're going to need a computer or a laptop to be able to do it. You may even require things like a printer as well if you wish to print out some of the documentation. The open book examination begins with a realistic case study style scenario of a working environment. Examples that we've seen in the past include things like chemical factories, office, uh, hotels. So a real broad range of different styles of working environment may be selected. Now, it doesn't matter whether you've worked in those type of working environments or not. That's what the assessment is designed to be looking at, is designed to, uh, to test your ability to apply your knowledge to a variety of different working environments. This workplace may require a lot of health and safety assistance and support because there may be a lot of improvements that need to be made, or equally, it may appear to be a very safe working environment that seems to be performing very well. Now, I'm gonna be looking at various bits of documentation throughout this video. Um, all of these bits of documentation are available on the NEBOSH website. So if you haven't already, it's well worth having a look on the NEBOSH website prior to starting the course. So you can feel very familiar with what to expect. So if you go on to www.nebosch.org.uk, you will be able to identify along the top panel there where it says qualifications. And from that, you'll then be able to select the 
National General Certificate qualification. This tells you some information about these qualifications. NEBOSH itself has been around for nearly 50 years as an organization, as a training organization. Click on certificates, it will then take you to the National General Certificate in Occupational Health and Safety. That's the course that you're sitting on. It provides you on the website various pieces of information regarding the course. You can see down the left-hand side panel there, who's the course for, what will I know and do, ready to study, ready to learn how to study, how long does it take and so on. We're going to have a look at the resources section. So the resources section contains a variety of different types of materials. We're looking at the digital assessment resources. We're going to start by having a look at the About Digital Assessment. The Digital Assessment is the Open Book Examination. So it says the digital format is an open book examination, which unlike an invigilated paper-based examination, allows learners to sit their NEBOSH assessment in their own home or another safe and suitable location. So part of preparing yourself for your open book examination is obviously thinking about where you're going to be. Now to complete the assessment, you're given 24 hours. Now usually the examination start time is 11 a.m. So you have 11 a.m. from 11 a.m. on the first day all the way through till 11 a.m. on the next date. So 24 hours to complete the open book examination. And this can be done at home or at work, somewhere quiet where you can concentrate. It's advisable that you complete your open book examination somewhere free from distractions and obviously somewhere with a good internet connection as well. You may wish what to print off the open book examination scenario, questions and so on and therefore having access to a printer would be recommended. And certainly that's something I would do because I would, uh, I'm old school, um, therefore I would uh, want to sort of print it off, get through my highlighter and my pen and, and do it that way as opposed to on screen. So you can see that there's various bits of information on here. This video is recorded uh, in July, 2023. So you can see that it shows some of the dates, for example, and when the results will come through. So I'm gonna go back now, and we're gonna go to the, look at some of the digital assessment resources that are available. You can see here that there are some sort of top tips, where to be, what you'll need, and a variety of different resources. So we're gonna start by having a look at the Open Book Examination Learner Guide. This guide talks you through the Open Book Examination, preparing for it, malpractice, and something that's known as a closing interview. Now, like I say, it would be advisable that you access these documents via the NEBOSH website before you start the course and have a good read through them. Your tutor will help and will discuss this information, but it's much better to be prepared. So what the open book examination does, as I said before, is this realistic case study st style scenario. Following on from the scenario, there will be a series of task based questions. These questions will either wholly or partly require information contained within the case study to be analysed by yourselves to provide the appropriate answer. The 
task-based questions will represent the core syllabus with, contained within those elements I've previously mentioned, one to four. As it is an open book examination, you are obviously allowed and advised to utilize all of the course materials that are given. So for example, those of you who are studying virtually, you'll receive a course textbook in the post. Those of you who are studying classroom, obviously on the first day of your classroom course, you'll be given a course textbook. Those are all provided by Project Skills Solutions. and There's no requirement for you to purchase any other additional resources. Other than having a look at the DBOCH website, the other useful website will, of course, be the Health and Safety Executive website. So that might be something that you use throughout your open book examination 24 hour period. It's important to note that when you are answering questions, you must not copy and paste sections of text, whether that be from the textbook, the HSE website or any source, and that all of the content of the answers are in your own words and your own answer. Hence why there's a section within this guide referring to um, plagiarism and malpractice. And now one question I get asked is about whether people need to revise because it's an open book examination. The short answer is, Yes, you do have to revise. You do need to prepare, be prepared. Being prepared is essential to the success of this examination. Preparing for your open book examination will involve different activities for different students based on your own learning style and your technical and occupational experience. Some students, for example, complete their open book um, examination practice questions. Um, for example, there is a sample paper available through the NEBOSH website and your tutor may be able to supply it with other examples of past papers. So some students would go through the activity of completing those as part of their revision. Others will utilise the revision questions within the textbook to refresh their knowledge in preparation for the exam. You'll need to develop your own style and use that own style for whatever works best for you. But it's essential that you do put time and planning into your revision prior to the open book examination. It's actually advised by NEBOSH that you complete around 20 or a minimum, should I say, of 20 hours of home study prior to your open book examination. And that should give you a good indication of how many additional hours of work are required of you outside the classroom. Now you will receive homework for um, each of the evenings that the course runs for, and it will be a requirement to complete that homework that evening and then submit that to your tutor for official marking the very next day. So it doesn't matter whether it's in the classroom, virtual classroom or face-to-face uh, -face delivery, everybody will be required to complete homework every evening and submit that homework for marking by your tutor. Now this is, there's, there's a variety of different reasons for this. Firstly, we find that this has been very effective at improving the overall pass mark of our students, because what it does is it kind of puts you in that test-like scenario of what it's gonna be like when you're actually sitting there completing your open book examination. Also, the homework you'll be given in the first week will be based on a realistic scenario, not dissimilar to what you will get on your open book examination. And the styles of questions will require that same level of knowledge and understanding and application of knowledge that would be required in the open book examination. So we're going through a process, almost like a sort of mock exam that we'll be completing throughout the homework in this first week. It is essential that you complete the homework. Your tutor can only advise you on your progress and strategies for improvement if they know how well you're doing. So you really do need to dedicate time to that. Now, I know that this might seem, well, gosh, well, I'm in the classroom all day and then I've got a couple of hours of homework to do every single night. I'm going to be tired. It's going to eat into family time or leisure activities. But remember that this course lasts for just two weeks. 
two weeks of dedication in order to achieve a qualification which will sit with you for the rest of your career. So how I look at it is like this, short-term pain, long-term gain. So anyway, let's come back to what we were talking about. So there's some examples here in this guide about preparing for um, before the assessment, uh, making sure that you're, you kind of prepare yourself for um, your planning, you're organized, you've done some revision, you're, you're, you're kind of confident in what you're gonna do, as well as preparing the space where you're actually gonna complete the assessment as well. There is a section in here about malpractice and plagiarism. I'm sure it goes without saying that you cannot have any assistance during that 24 hours from anybody else and you can't copy any work from anyone else or something like a textbook or an online document. Equally, you can't collude with other learners as well to assist you. Uh, this is something which they take incredibly seri serious and answers are scanned electronically to identify any potential malpractice or plagiarism. So it's really, really not worth it. The whole point of this assessment is to ensure that you're going to be a competent safety professional. And you can only do that by, of course, demonstrating your own competence. Now, I'll, as it's come on to this in the guide, I will talk about your closing interview. So once you've completed week one, week two, you've done your open book examination, what then has to happen from Project Skills Solutions perspective is they have to conduct a closing interview. Part of the interview is to confirm that you are you and it was you that completed the uh, assessment. And you'll have to do that by going onto a video um, linked. Um, so uh, it'll be an online video link um, call that will come in this interview. It's all done through Zoom or Teams, whichever suits you. Uh, so you can do that through using a phone, a tablet, computer, whichever works. And you'll need to show, firstly, the uh, admin team member from Project Skills Solutions some identification, photo identification, so passport, driving license, that sort of thing. And you'll also have to confirm that there's no one else in the room with you. So uh, just scan around the room, making sure that there's no one else in the room. And you also need to sit with the door to the room closed, but behind you so clearly visible on camera. The point of the interview is to ensure that you didn't receive any support. And it really solidifies this position of this being a, a genuinely well sought after sort of gold standard of qualification that we're ensuring that everybody does this and they're and they're uh, you know we can check that uh, people have not had any support during the exam typically you're going to be asked questions about your open book examination so this is where you're going to be asked questions well you know on on question number two uh, can you just explain your answer a little bit more so it just confirms that you are who you are this will take no more than about 15 minutes and the date and time will be confirmed between Project Skills admin team and yourself. Um, so it's important that you attend because they won't submit your open book examination and other assessments until such time as this has been done. Also within this guide, we've got some frequently asked questions. So if there's anything you're not sure of, uh, for example, if you believe that you are uh, maybe entitled to some additional time or support because of a reasonable adjustment, um, then it's worth having a look at this information or co contacting the admin support team at Project Skills. So the other thing I wanted to talk you through is another guide that's available. This is the technical learner guide. This actually explains, I'm just scrolling all the way through, this actually explains the process involved in, um, so starting from the day you begin your course all the way up to the very end, this takes you through the journey. So one of the things that has to be done is that the admin team have to register you um, as a, um, that you're assisting the course. So making sure that the information that you've given to them on registration is correct and that you've given them the correct email address for yourselves. You'll then see a, receive a confirmation email to say that you have been registered for the open book examination. 
Then, of course, you've got your revision and study part. So that's sort of getting on and attending the course. And then just before the open book examination date, you will receive a email from NEBOSH directly and it will allow you to log in to the online assessment platform, which on the day of your open book examination will then contain your scenario and question templates. So once you receive this email from NEBOSH ahead of your open book examination date, you need to log into it using the temporary password that's given. Then you'll be asked to create a new password, have a look around the platform, make sure you're you know, familiar with it, and then it will be ready for the day of your open book examination. So then on examination date, make sure that you're you know, sat there in front and ready by the time usually it's 11 o'clock. So ready to start at that point, because once that time hits, that's when your 24 hours begins and making sure that you submit by, by the 24 hour period, not 24 hours in one minute, but by sort of, I would always make sure that 23 hours and a few minutes either side, you are submitting that so that there's no technical issues and so on. Now in that 24 hour period, if you have any problems, technical problems with logging on to the platform, Project Skills would not be able to assist you. You would need to go directly to NEBOSH and they do have on their website, there's an email which is obe at nebosch.org.uk, but they also have an online um, uh, sort of web bot that will assist you as well if necessary. So if there's any technical problems with the assessment side of it, uh, either logging in or submitting at the end of the 24 hour period, you need to go to Nebosch as opposed to Project Skills because they don't have any access to that. Once you've submitted, you'll then obviously have your closing interview. And then after 50 days, you'll receive your assessment results. So with this particular assessment, in order to successfully pass, you need to obtain 45% or 45 out of 100 in order to pass. That's the minimum pass mark. Okay, so next we're going to have a look at the guidance document here. Again, all of these available through the NEBOSH website. This is a guide that talks you specifically through the actual scenario-based assessment, the open book examination assessment. So it's well worth having a look through this document in your own time. But what you can see here is that the assessment has two parts, the scenario, as I've already mentioned, and then a series of tasks that you need to complete. It's important that you attempt all of the tasks contained within the open book examination and that you submit the open book examination for marking via the NEBOSH hub, uh, NEBOSH portal within the time allotted. During the 24 hours of the OBE, um, as I said to you before, only NEBOSH will be able to assist you with any questions or queries. So if you've got anything you need, any questions, anything you're unsure of, go to them through this 24 hour period. In the lead up to it, of course, you're either your tutor or the admin team would be able to support you. Talks a little bit about uh, the format of the questions and the language that's going to be used throughout the assessment. They use what they call uh, plain English, simple as possible and ambiguous as possible. At the end of the day, safety can be complicated enough without using big fancy words and, and, and so on. It talks about the scenario. So some examples of what the scenario look like and some of the wording as well. And the important thing about the scenario is that nothing is put in the scenario by chance. All of the information contained within there has some meaning, whether that is indicating something about the scenario that's good, something that's bad, something that needs to be altered or improved, it's done very, very purposely. So there's no sort of flat, you know, there's no sort of flippant comments, 
they're all very important. We're going to have a look at an example in just a moment, and I'll explain what I mean by that. But throughout this, um, this section, it's talking here about the fact that there are these, as they talked about it here, subtle signposts or clues in the text. And it's our job to obviously analyze that and pull out those clues. And that's why I like to print them out and get my highlighter pen out and underline bits and write notes as well to actually help me pull out these good, these, uh, these kind of good and bad areas of it or something that I think, oh, OK, that seems unusual. You know, if you're getting that vibe about it, even before you've looked at the tasks, it's worth making a note of anything that stands out to you. In fact, what I always advise my students when they get the scenarios, whether it's through homework or the real open book examination, is to not look at the, the uh, tasks, the questions, until you've thoroughly examined the scenario itself. Because the questions are going to sway you and you might miss bits. So I would do the analysis, the analysis of the scenario first and then start tackling each of the questions. So in terms of the questions, they use things like comment on this, evaluate this, uh, explain this. Uh, um, so they're often looking at, you know, positive and negative aspects of the scenario. The questions itself, there's two styles of questions. Um, what we have are questions that say, in part, use or, or um, based on the scenario only questions. These are the type of question where the answer they require is going to be taken directly from the scenario itself. You shouldn't need to, you, to, to put anything, uh, any context relating to the textbook or the HSE website within the answer itself. You might want to refer, to remind yourself about the topic area but you're not going to need to include any of that knowledge in your answer. The question that say um, that there's, there's two types of questions, as I say, one that says based on the scenario only and the other style of question um, requires you to use knowledge as well as information within the scenario potentially to fulfill the requirements for the question. So when we look at the example, I'll be able to demonstrate that clearer to you. Now, the marking scheme for the questions are given in brackets next to each of the question. So, for example, you may get a question that's worth 10 marks. Now, what that means is that you need to make 10 clearly identifiable points in order to get those marks. So if you only, for example, state five points in your answer, the most marks you're going to get, if all five are correct, is five marks. So we need to plan be answering to these questions before we start typing away, making sure that we've clearly identified the right number of points required or as many as we possibly can before we start typing away. Because one of the things I find from my experience delivering this course and looking at homework is that if students don't plan their answer, I can actually see that within the answer they give because very often they'll start answering the actual question and then they'll go off a on, on a tangent. That point that I can tell that they've totally lost the point and now they're not gonna gain any marks. The other thing I can actually tell, and again, this might seem a bit strange, is I can tell when students don't actually use the textbook. They don't use the knowledge that they've learned through the class or in the textbook to help support their answers. And, and you can tell that because they feel like they're clutching at straws with the answer. Whereas if they went to their textbook, found the right page, they'd actually be able to use that information to support the collation of this answer. Next section here, and this is really, really important. They've got this thing which they call the P principle, as I call it. I think they're probably meant to call it the PEE -E principle, but they I'd like really. Um, this particular part talks about exam technique, and I think this is really, really useful. This is something that I've been using for a while um, before they actually kind of use this in this in this um, guide. But it's been something that I've been advising students for a while now. 
So if a question is worth 10 marks, in order to get the 10 marks that are available, there's three things that you need to include your answer. One is you need to make your point. So the point is the uh, fact that's going to gain you that sort of mark in the right direction. But it doesn't just end there because you also need to give an explanation of that point. Why are you saying that? So, for example, if the question said, identify a control measure that you would implement to improve working conditions at this workplace, and you said, I would give my staff manual handling training. There's your point, okay? But on its own, it's not going to give you any marks because you need to tell me why and what's the benefit. So why are you suggesting manual handling training? Okay, I'm suggesting manual handling training because currently the staff do a lot of moving of items around the working environment. So there's the reason why you're saying it. And why, you know, why is it going to benefit people? Because then if the staff members learn how to correctly carry out manual handling activities, they'll be less likely then to end up with injuries or ill health connected with it. So I've made my point, I've said why, and I've said what the purpose of that is as well. And that's really, really important. I see this time and time again, where people um, create lists of points and say, these are the 10 reasons, but they haven't given that evidence and explanation, and therefore they don't gain the mark. So if on this particular guide, you're gonna look at anything, I would make sure you read the P principle um, and uh, absorb that and use that when you first start getting your homework from your tutor as well. Take that on board from the very get go. So there's lots of bits of information referring to that. Another one here is about how much you should write. Um, so for some time, there's, there has been a little bit of a confusion about the word count, because what we'll have a look at in a minute is that there is a word, suggested word count, but it is not something that you have to adhere to. The word count there is there purely as a guide. So the so Niebosch is saying that realistically to write enough to give enough information and demonstrate knowledge, talking about at least 3000 words for your whole open book examination. And that doesn't mean that if you write less, you're going to be penalized or you write more, you're going to be penalized. But it's looking at around that kind of ballpark figure. So if you're somebody that struggles to write enough, that might be difficult for you. But that's where your practice and homework will come in and assist you in kind of building those answers. Obviously, if you're a bit of a waffler, you might want to kind of learn to be a little bit more succinct. Uh, so you're not going hugely over that word count, but it's just showing you the sort of level of response that needs to be given. Now, if you get a question that's worth 20 marks and you get a question that's worth five marks, realistically, your 20 mark question is going to be looking at four times as much content as the one that's only worth five marks is going to be given. So if you, for a five mark question, you want write one side of A4, realistically, you'd be looking at four sides of A4 for a 20 mark question. Um, so. I've seen it before where somebody's sort of given a, a two mark answer and they've written half a side and then they've done a 10 mark question and they've also written half a side. So that's got to tell you why have I written the same amount? Well, actually, um, it's worth very different amounts in terms of, in terms of marks available. So there's various different examples that it gives there, which obviously you can have a look through. So the thing I just wanted to finish on is having a look at an example here of an open book examination. So what you've got here is this is the format, this is the look of what your assessment is going to look like, your open book examination. So this is just the example that they have on the website. Um, and it really sort of reiterates some of the points that I've already made. So here we've got our scenario, okay? So I'm just gonna go through this just to sort of pick out bits that I would identify, okay? So you are a newly appointed health and safety advisor for a construction company. So straight away, I'm thinking to myself, that's something positive. The organization has decided that they want to ensure that they have competent support when it comes to safety management. You work in the head office, which is a two-story building along with 
20 other office based workers who administer construction contracts. One of these working workers has a has impaired hearing. An office based contracts manager who coordinates construction work contracts and activities. 20 mobile construction workers, including an operations manager who occasionally visits the office in their vehicles. So straight away, they've said in there about a two storey office building. So they've probably not put that in just off the cuff. It's probably there for a purpose. So maybe that's something that I need to identify. We've got 20 workers doing administrative tasks. One of the workers has a hearing impairment. Okay? So this could be an issue, for example, in the event of a fire alarm. We've got an office based contracts manager who coordinates the construction work and activities. OK, and um, I, I'm, I'm a little confused how if they're office based, how they would be able to coordinate construction activities. So maybe they don't actually manage it. They're literally just administer, administrating it. 20 mobile construction workers, including operations manager. So mobile workers, they're out and about, they're going to different places. Um, and this operations manager who occasionally visits the office and they're in their vehicle. So at some points we're going to have potentially, if everybody's got their own vehicle, maybe 20 vehicles suddenly turning up on site, which again, I'm sort of thinking, well, have we got car parking for that? And, and uh, um, you know, are we ensuring that uh, people drive safely when they're coming onto the car park? It says the opening hours of the office are flexible, depending on the needs of the work. Again, that might just be a comment that we've been given, but is this then potentially got something like loan working to consider within this? The contracts manager has a reputation for being irritable and unapproachable and is only seen when arriving and leaving and is occasionally abusive and interruptive. OK, so the contracts manager is this office based contracts manager who coordinates the construction contracts and activities. They're irritable. They're unapproachable and is only seen when arriving and leaving. Wow. OK, so this is somebody who kind of sits in their office all day, doesn't really integrate with the office staff, potentially the construction workers when they come to office and is even abusive. Wow. OK, so we've got a potential bullying aspect here, aggression and violence in the work environment. This is looking not conducive with a nice, harmonious working environment. So I'm going to stop there because I'm just demonstrating that it's this analysis. I haven't even looked at the questions yet. I don't even know what they're going to ask me, but I'm picking this apart. I'm kind of doing my best Poirot impression. See, now I'm showing my age to pick this apart and get all those bits of information, those nuggets of information out of there. And whilst I'm doing this, of course, I can be taking notes. I could be doing a list of sort of pros and cons that this scenario is actually giving me. And then if we scroll through, you see there's a lot more in that scenario you could pick through. Then we've got our task based questions. So the first one says discussing moral reasons for managing health and safety. So the tasks are all based around the syllabus. So within the front of the textbook, you'll see that there is a syllabus and you'll be able to then, based on the task, identify the, the section of the syllabus to then identify the section within the textbook. So if you're thinking, oh, I don't know how to answer this question. You can filter through to the right section within the textbook to read through, refresh, remind you, and perhaps give you some pointers on how to construct your answer. So you've been asked to chair the health and safety committee. Before the meeting, you decide that you will open the meeting by reminding everyone of moral expectations of safety and health. Prepare notes of the moral arguments you would use at the meeting, 10 marks, and it says, note, you should support your answer where applicable using relevant information from the scenario. So I said before, there were two styles of questions you'd get asked. This is the first one where you see that you should support your answer where applicable using relevant information from the scenario. What this means is that there may not be anything within the scenario that you could use to support your answer. If there is, you can though. If not, you're going to apply your knowledge only. So this is where you would go and say, right, what are my moral arguments? What are my reasons as to why we bother with health and safety from that moral perspective? And of course, the content of that will come clear as you go through your course itself. But that's the style of question that's being asked there. 
The other style of question that you would get is one that looks like this where you have this note at the bottom saying, based on the scenario only. This is where you would only use information within the scenario to help you form your answers. So I'm hoping that has given you a great insight into the week one process and the open book examination. Like I say, the more prepared you are, uh, the more looking at these documents, reading through, preparing for that first day, first week, the better position you're going to be in, the more confident position you're going to be in come these different forms of assessment. Now, there is another video that we've produced to support with the assessment for the week two section of the course. So uh, perhaps when you're kind of preparing yourself for week two, you can obviously have a watch through that as well. Um, the great thing about these videos is it's something that you can also refer back to, look back on at any point during the course or any of your revision sections of the course so that you know that you're gonna be in the best sort of confident position look at the NEBOSH website, download those documents, read through them and prepare yourself as much as possible so that you're ready and raring for that first day of the course. So, as I said before, my name is Daisy. You never know, you might see me on your course. Um, enjoy yourself and um, Project Skills are a great learning provider and they're very, very supportive. So they're there if you need any additional support. And of course, your tutor will be able to assist you as well in any way they can. So good luck with your course. And I hope you found this video helpful. Take care. Keep safe.